Welcome everyone to another breaking news segment and uh, we have a couple of news and uh, this time we start a little bit more with a Linux centered view not with uh, Apple and insecurity. <coughs> anyway, for those who are into usable laptops here like mostly ThinkPads or Dell XPS or any of this other fine goodness with working keyboards, you know, you can get work done and stuff. Here is the news of the X1 Carbon, I guess, 6th gen and T480S that we had previously also this, of course, being the T490S of mostly quite good goodness. And um, so there is some news that I didn't really saw coming or monitored and there you see how much attention to detail you can um, focus on and um, yeah, review and stuff. And what we are here for, I actually actually missed this a little bit. And uh, and that, so apparently on Windows, the performance can be higher. And this is of course troubling. And yeah, 2019, what have we expected with ACPI, the Advanced Control and Power Management Interface? So what happened? So some people found, well, certainly we actually booted Windows for this test. I usually would not even boot Windows because now for whatever, but it's, it is actually important that we do. So in the future, I need to take more care of such kind of details. And actually I need to check with this T490S if it is affected. So what happened is Windows is higher performance, Linux slightly less, and people poked around there apparently already for a year. I somehow missed this. Um, yeah, for actually way over a year apparently. Um, however, there is breaking news. Intel apparently or Intel and Lenovo now said they are working on this one year later. So the root cause of this is as so often all this fancy CPU internal configuration and state, all this fine details that vendors like NVIDIA is too top secret for us mere mortals and developers to know. So as usual, there are some model-specific registers, MSRs, and that are set by the BIOS and apparently also tweaked by ACPI that control the configurable thermal design power. And in this case, here's some power limit apparently, and um, Windows sets the value here apparently to 14 hex, which is probably 20. Um, so apparently limiting to maybe 20 watts or whatever. Um, or 20, 20 centigrade or 20 watts or whatever. Um, and this for those people here results in CPU throttling as soon as 80 centigrades um, Celsius are reached. And there is already some poking for this. So this is apparently caused by Intel's dynamic platform and thermal framework, uh, DPTF. And fun fact, of course, AMD had something similar. We have seen in the AMD ThinkPad, so whatever you buy, you buy Intel or AMD ThinkPads, you have some ACPI, thermal, yeah. And this is why I make these videos. I want to bring such details to some global attention because otherwise it's always mysterically like you have different performance on Windows, different performance on Linux, apparently allegedly on um, such kind of peak box devices here. Apple is apparently, allegedly, I have not checked this personally, but some people claim that on some latest Core i9, Apple is even undervolting maybe. So you have different performance on Windows and on Mac OS on those um, Apple kind of Frankenstein PCs, because apparently Apple is also specifically tweaking there something. And I've personally anyway seen if I run Linux, even on this aging Retina MacBook Pro here, um, I made a couple of videos with hidden AFI stuff and, and such. I have much worse battery and thermal performance on, even with fine tuning on this Retina MacBook Pro from even already six years ago. Anyway, on the AMD ThinkPad that was STAPM, and fun fact, it took me like literally five minutes before this live stream, I, I should have already scheduled it. It took me five minutes to find this even with Googling, I was Googling for STEM something, only found their stems and whatnot. It took five minutes to get back to what even this was. I probably need to make a own internal note here of uh, fancy abbreviations that you forgot what they even were, what they stand for. So STEM 
äh, STAPM, STAPM, not STEM, sorry, STAPM ist Skin Temperature Aware Power Management at AMD Site for Ryzen or Pre-Ryzen. And so this is supposed to keep here your skin temperature cool, which also here is usually the battery, so I don't know. Also maybe skin temperature on the other side, I don't know, some, some nonsense. And um, this was on the AMD or many AMD ThinkPads and many other devices set relatively low, so that if you tweak this, in the meantime, there is some code there even for Linux or especially for Linux to either, you could modify this on the MD side with modifying the ACPI tables or now there is also dynamic code for that even for Linux because nowadays 2019 year of desktop Linux or Haiku or whatever. And for Intel, there is now something similar. Um, so yeah, there is this universal way to modify this is here stem, stemlifier and there is also others. And for Intel, there's also um, just to pulling some, um, but you will find this with Google, right? So Intel, there's dynamic, what was it? Intel dynamic uh, DPTF. Yeah, so many tabs. DPTF. Um, Linux, so there is some um, thermal D or something, uh, as well as some, yeah, of course, as usual, you find here whatever wikis before, hello, GitHub. Internet of, um, maybe, uh, development, even through, yet officially supported. Yes, yeah, there, there is some news, Lenovo and Intel. I also don't quite understand why does it always take so long. It's not like it's desktop Linux of year of 2019. And um, I'm not sure if it was this one though, but you get the idea there was also some other, maybe it's this one. Um, yeah, Lenovo wants to make the Samsung official now, not so much more as odd, I think, some of was this in the announcement, is it from today? Anyway, you get the idea, just that you are aware, probably, but again, this is why I built up this channel that spreading awareness otherwise, very few people shout this out and even I have not found this, so only I accidentally discovered this with all the random bits and pieces you read over the day. And this needs to be more known in my opinion because otherwise the CPUs become more complex and uh, billions of transistors and even extensions that are barely if at all documented and ACPI magic with methods that even only later with decompiling the ACPI message you figure out, even on the ThinkPad here, we had the other new Linux driver for this privacy shield or guard or something, where even I did not think with following the regular internet stuff that the privacy guard stuff to limit the viewing angle on ThinkPads is actually dynamic and controlled with a button and controlled with an ACPI method. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, share, like, and subscribe for more of this internal reporting here. In similar internal reporting, Apple is evaluating new keyboard mechanisms to make make thinner MacBooks. You can't make this up. Yep, um, 2019, the MacBook keyboards already barely work. Welcome everyone there in the comments. Detard, the graver, um, yeah. All the Apple fans and family, also we are not fans anymore, but the one thing I think every in the Apple community asks is working keyboards and what is Apple doing? Hey, you want thinner keyboards? Like, no, please, for God's sake, no, please don't. Um, seriously, by the way, I have one. So, I mean, this whole situation is crazy. There you see is what people ask for and what people, what companies give you, like, no, please, not, I mean, I personally don't buy this anymore. Even actually, I'm a little bit more drastical nowadays. Even if Apple would give me perfectly fine working keyboard, keyboards, which apparently right now they not even giving us, nor are they apparently on the right track record there to get there again. Um, and people, even, even when they work, people, even Mac, diehard Mac fans say, this keyboards type like a piece of garbage, like a dead cardboard there. Um, type even if so even if they are before they are broken after a, a week or months allegedly apparently even then people say 
the typing experience is miserable and what is Apple doing? Hey, you want it even thinner. Um, I have here one free pro tip here um, because we are certainly engineers and, and stuff and not like some I buy this because it's not amazing. There is a video on YouTube, the Bauer just this week, he uh, cut a um, he cut a Intel Core i9 something um, and in half and put it under a electron microscope here somewhere. I thought it was was this new or um, uploads was this new or not. Maybe this video was older already, at least it was. Um, there, power electron microscope. Maybe it was an older video then. Um, yeah, a year ago, the usual YouTube algorithms re recommending a year old video. So, if you want this thinner, a free advice from me, um, the PCB is still one millimeter, right? Uh, plus minus. So, maybe inspire here from the PCB of Core i9 goodness and make your PCB thinner just a sort. You certainly can save half a millimeter there, but certainly not safe on the keyboard that is hilarious. Also this video from a year, although it's a year ago, pretty cool video how tiny and your logic gates are there and uh, even the PCB substrate there uh, with, oops, with multiple layers there on um, Core i9 or all the latest generation certainly yeah AMD Ryzen. So quite impressive this manufacturing. Let's see comments in the audience speaking of some throttling today. They ship the patch that prevents the aging. A um, so the graver submitted a patch to prevent the aging Acer Aspire AMD laptop from burning up because the fans did not spin up. Hey, that sounds like an amazing patch. Maybe um, URL to this patch would be cool just to learn something. Um, yeah, uh, detailed uh, soon MacBooks will arrive with a negative mass. And what I also don't underst understand with this nonsense, I, even if Apple fixes the keyboard, um, I should probably. So the only, but I will, will soon make a dedicated video um, about this. Why are, by the way, Christian's videos uh, links always? Uh, probably because you had S in the. Um, so do we even know we are not in? Full autofocus mode. Um, so even on this, and let's manual focus just because otherwise the focus always focuses back and forth. So even, of course, right now, do, by the way, dongle galore only for live streaming, right? This is HD uh, cheap crap HDMI capture. By the way, where did we focus to this level? Um, even this ThinkPad, all as amazing as it is, one of the best. Um, laptops, well, also personally, again, a loaner unit, not a paid advertisement. But the one thing I would criticize is the thinness. I would love to have it one millimeter thicker, better battery life, better thermal performance and a regular Ethernet port because maybe I don't even have, I somewhere here on the dongle table have the matching cable, but um, the dongle, so if you plug in here USB-C, like um, we can probably can this live, right? What should happen uh, in a live stream? So if you plug this in here, this does not even, the Ethernet dongle does not fit even in there. I will call this out in a more dedicated video. So this is total hilarious design that I'm not sure if it physically, if you would cut the plastic. So there is of course some two millimeter of plastic here. This is not the dongle, I have it somewhere. Um, Somewhere of uh, dongle goodness. Anyway, you get the idea. So even the ThinkPads and the companies like Lenovo and Dell and such, they make the mistake. People are already not satisfied with MacBooks and big PC vendors. They have no other idea than copying a not good trend. And I said this before independently of this Ethernet jack. Not only is a dongle annoying because I traveled to Russia and I forgot the dongle. Although right now I'm not in Russia, I have the dongle somewhere here. But um, where is even my small bag? Maybe I have it somewhere, whatever. Ah, I think I know where I have it. I think I have it with my amazing USB dongles. Ah, wait a second, I have it here in this amazing Lenovo bag. Um, at least I think I have it. Ah, here I have it. 
there you see it traveling with U-speed dongles and stuff. So this is this uh, amazing uh, plug so much to our uh, live stream looking for dongles. And this is life with dongles. When people always tell me now dongles are amazing. So you see how much black rubber plastic stuff is there. And you certainly can cut this. I have not done this yet. But um, because, yeah, you see how much plastic is there. I also don't quite understand why Lenovo needs to do it so stupidly. Maybe for the docking solution there, there is a dedicated docking solution, which I would not recommend because I will never again waste my money on docking stuff that is specific to one machine. So I will only get here this universal USB-C stuff, which actually happens to be Lenovo, which I not paid advertisement, I purchased this myself. Also, the problem I have is all this USB-C stuff, as it's not a paid advertisement. All of them are a little bit flunky, so sometimes they work, sometimes a little glitchy. Uh, sometimes they charge, sometimes they don't charge, and yeah. Um, so yeah, only this stuff, because this might even work on a MacBook, not tested this, but um, I'm only buying this. I think I've tested this maybe on the Samsung Galaxy S10e, but not sure, maybe. But yeah, this is certainly totally stupid, and if you cut this, maybe let me know, but I don't really want to cut this now. But there you see how stupid it is. We have in 2019, not only do you need an Ethernet dongle, it doesn't even plug in the same time with a USB-C cable. And I don't quite this engineering, act actually, to be honest. And the reason I wouldn't purchase MacBook Pros, of course, is a soldered memory or so maybe a Mac Mini might not have been soldered right, but what does... What does socketed memory help me if the SSD is soldered. So totally nonsense. The one thing that is much more important for upgrades, for data recovery um, and for swapping it's the memory. And there you see Apple's priorities. When people tell me, but the Mac mini has no socketed memory. Yeah, but the memory will last likely forever, at least probably a decade or two or three or 50 years. The one thing that does not last forever is the solid state drive that has some maybe 10,000 write cycles nowadays. Previously they had 1,000, maybe 5,000, I don't know. So some terror or some, some terror or petabytes you can write. But eventually if you do some like professional video editing or other professional machine learning load or whatever, you will most likely wear those SSDs out in maybe five years time. And then people argue with me, yeah, but not in five years. I say, okay, fine, in seven. So then in seven years, you have a logic board you can throw away, right? Previously, you could resell Macs on eBay forever, and now you have SSDs that will definitely fail eventually. And even again for data recovery, for upgrades, even here in this, it is socketed. I made a video here how to replace this yourself. And even with this six, seven years old thing, I went to Apple, I said, I want to purchase an upgrade here, a thousand euros. And they said, no, we will not upgrade it. Although it's socketed. Although there was in the meantime, a terabyte sized um, upgrade, they would just not sell it to me. So thank you very much Apple for this amazing customer and business service. Um, it is hilarious. Let's see, um, it's not flagged a new record. What do we have here? Is uh, something um, that reminds me, I want to patch something. What was it somewhere, whatever. Uh, maybe we get, uh, maybe I remember. So negative mass, don't mind sick big laptops even much. Yeah, also, why did I hold this ethernet dongle in the um, camera? Not only do you probably have to buy this separately, um, I got this for free though, but um, I guess you need to, I'm, I'm not sure if it's packed with a machine because I usually had review units here. So leave me, in the, if you know, leave me in the comments below if you need to pay, purchase it. But in, nonetheless, you travel like I, the last month I flew to Moscow and I didn't have this with me. So yeah, that sucked. And then you can't even buy it easily in Moscow for those who say, yeah, but buy the dongle, yeah, good luck. I mean, of course you can buy it somewhere, but not easily. And I certainly don't want to mail order something in Russia. Um, and in any case, with just two millimeters more, it would fit in here and I wouldn't have a dongle and I would have better thermals, a better battery and so on and so on. Um, so, um, yeah, this is why personally I said this again, I would personally get some slightly thicker model with, with uh, Ethernet. More like um, 
it sounds more exciting than I actually was. Didn't really use. Uh, I don't really laptops unless it has a full size DVI port. Yeah, this is also um, an, an annoyance. Um, also, I DVI, uh, DVI I don't need, but um, HDMI, even the seven year old or six year old MacBook Pro has an HDMI slot that is actually pretty convenient. DVI I don't really need that urgently. DVI is fine, which fun fact, this Lenovo also had. Um, I think he yeah, has a new MacBooks don't have this anymore. And this is for me, of course, you don't need it every day, but not only is it convenient in the office, it's for sure convenient if you are somewhere at someone like at home, at your girlfriend, in your living room, and you want to plug in a TV or a projector and it makes life easier. Yes, you can have a dongle, but then you have the dongle in the office, then you need to go to the office or you need to order one or... Um, and yes, I have multiple dongles everywhere, but you know how it is. I always need that one dongle. For example, the HDMI 2 dongle I have at, ho uh, at home and then I need it in the office and vice versa. And yeah, dongle uh, galore. Let's see more comments. A new record. My first comment on a stream gets flagged. Uh, no worries. Um, I approved it already. Um, so it's in favor of languages just you know also absolutely in favor of full language uh, as is this actually gone down instead of up uh, this is actually an interesting point because just I think this morning I replied on slash dot of all sites to such an sinner comment with SSDs and of course some Apple fanboy argued with me uh, five years is bullshit um, at least as SD cards I had failing here and I will for sure report um, how the other SSDs stack up. And yes, it's a good point. Um, I think this is this TLC or something, this is a tree state something. And also maybe the heat in overheating and thermal throttling MacBooks does not help either. So maybe the SSDs last 10,000 write cycles or 5,000. And of course, only due to bare leveling, right? So you could write only one file 5,000, 10,000 times, and then it would be defect, just like this um, good old fashioned either USB stick or SD card. Actually, here it is uh, SD card, but um, they only last longer because of wear leveling, distributing all this rights there in some circular um, wear leveling all over the place fashion. Otherwise, uh, the SSDs would die much faster. And this is also why this SDs always die actually. Here's the SDs. Why the SD in the Raspberry Pi? Everything at hand. Why the SDs on embedded devices like this? Um, leave, uh, actually, Andreas uh, Bergman or so in the comments previously commented, yes, SD cards also failed multiple, multiple times for them. I really wonder why SD cards do not do wear leveling. Maybe because most people, people write them linear in a linear fashion with photos and videos. But this also means most, leave me in the comments below if you know of any, I actually googled this some months ago, I didn't find out much information. If you know of any normal SD cards that do wear leveling for stuff like Raspberry Pis and other. Um, also, people always tell me, why do, you, why do I not use some SCSI to SD card in the Octane? Just because they usually fail on me anyway, why should I um, swap a good old SCSI hard drive that works for something that will for sure fail sometime soon? with some massive journaling Unix file system load. Um, let's see, what do they have? Um, absolutely going down instead of up. Yeah, and also I read so detailed rights. First there was SLC, then MLC. So this was single uh, level or something, multi-level and T, what was it even? Something of that sort. I also can't remember everything. There you see, even IT, if, even if we try to shout or hear some details, it's even hard to get and keep an overview. Don't mind. Um, cheap but powerful Chinese Xiaomi, Xiaomi Mi Book Pro came with one of those dongles for free. Um, yeah, what else do we have there? Um, Christian doesn't mind the lack of ports, cheap, small toys, but workstation laptops definitely needs uh, it said that those 
go on after one on the real ones. Yeah, unfortunately, Apple, Apple is doing something. Then the Apple fanboys trapped in the reality distortion field don't question it and just always accept everything. Like, yeah, I, I just switched to Android, right? I want to have headphone jack. Um, and then it spreads through the whole PC industry. And then the PC industry wonders that the PC users are not satisfied and PC sales go also down. So, yeah. Uh, what else? The problem with those dongles, aside from having to carry them, is that the connections are insanely unreliable. Just bump it slightly and everything stops working. Yeah, um, working. Yes, I have the same problem. So, um, not on this ThinkPad, but on the Dell XPS and other machines. Sometimes I had my amazing portable USB C SSD also disconnecting a couple of times. And I certainly noticed, for example, you have seen this in my MacBook Air video with even not USB-C but mini display port. That connector on my MacBook Air is already um, past its lifetime and I have not even used it often, right? So even I used it maybe 100 times or even less in this particular MacBook Air and the mini display port is not connecting reliably anymore, especially it's totally annoying for a display. You plug it in, nothing happens. You need to maybe you need to put some some stuff below it to press it up a little bit to have some proper contact and then it works it is even more annoying you've seen this in my video with installing recovering ssd stuff on macbooks totally annoying if you use this mini display port thunderbolt thunderbolt i think um, target display mode and then it's unreliable and you want to recover data and it stops working and, and stuff and yeah, and I also really wonder you have the power delivery of quite some wattage. You have the, all the data pins. I also really wonder how long it really lasts right now. I'm not using any of those USB-C ports that much, but I think people who really use such kind of MacBooks each and every day as a docking port, um, I have the feeling they will become unreliable after really using it each and every day for a year or two. So, yeah. Um, Let's see, Christian writes, um, Linux has a few file systems that does it on a software level, yes, uh, like FS, 2F or something, there's some oh, log, log FS for this kind of embedded uh, workload, but it needs some, I think it doesn't work on USB storage, at least not natively, they need some special block level kind of flash stuff for MMC kind of um, flash access that indeed um, works. Well leveling requires quite a bit of memory to keep cons of blocks, a little MCU and SD cards can't cope. Yeah, well, they have actually an ARM controller in there, right? Um, so, um, yeah, maybe they just don't do well leveling for high performance linear writes on video and photo load and something of that sort. Um, um, yeah. Anyway, in similar news, okay, we had this. In similar news, there is an alternative app store now for iPhone and macOS and it doesn't even require jailbreaking. That is actually quite interesting. So this is only like out today or something. And how this works is actually without jailbreaking, it's using enterprise certificates. And this, I think it means that it only works or temporary or something. So it, it, it requires side loading certificates. So you need a free app um, Apple so, uh, developer account, I think it's free or something. And so it needs to re-sign those apps every other day. You see this here somewhere. Um, some of this, this page is a little bit strange. Um, you see, uh, here's, you see it expires in seven days. So it's using some Wi-Fi API, some Wi-Fi Xcode and app deployment signing protocol and um, re-signing those apps over Wi-Fi. This is a quite interesting idea, um, actually pretty amazing um, that nobody before did this, or at least not on such a, such a scale, probably I need to take a nap. Get over this hiccup. A pretty outstanding idea, really novel thing. And there you see Apple being beaten with their own toys in a way. I'm not sure if it allows, it would be actually really cool if we show Apple a really large finger <laughs> and 
users start using this on a really massive scale, that would be so amazing. Not sure if this um, features uh, paid apps yet, but that would be so amazing if it does. Um, and actually, I'm kind of motivated um, to try this even out. Just uh, It would only make sense if, for example, for paid apps, it supports like only 10% or so revenue sharing or something instead of the 30. Um, but this is so cool. I have no words, really creative ways. That is what we are here for, to inspire people. Share this is thinking out of the box, right? This is for the uh, troublemakers, the uh, round um, square in the round hole or something there, whatever that text was. And uh, so cool. Um, there probably was some text somewhere of somebody. I'm also surprised that that this site, it's a little bit strange that you would expect such a site to have some more information. Alt store, um, iOS something, um, the Verge, um, maybe, not sure, it's not where I read this earlier. But you get the idea. Um, no, so DeGrail writes, no way Apple will allow 30% cash grab go up in air. Well, they don't really have too much choice. So this, they use the regular, they only can change the API for Xcode um, and make it harder or incompatible, but people could always adapt, right? So this is official means. So this also could can allow here this emulators and stuff for everyone, super easy peasy stuff, totally amazing stuff. Um, do we have here more, um, was it this link or it's even, is it even totally open source? Maybe Outkit, Alt Server, Alt Store. Fun stuff here, only live on this channel. And well, they can't do much except, so that it's an official API, that like debugging and development API. Of course, it's slightly inconvenient of re-signing it every seven days, but so what? As long as it works, and yes, it's tiny little bit inconvenient, but whatever, as long. But there you see the App Store monopoly needs to be opened. Um, I don't really, I have server infrastructure, right? I don't need Apple. I, it, for me, it only causes headache, like sending it there, it disappears. Uh, sending it there, they don't like the icon. Sending it there, they don't like the sh screenshot um, and so on. And why should we be forced, like software professionals like myself and, and others out there, um, to share, to have the, all the trouble that Apple doesn't allow this, Apple whatever, and also constantly changing now they force us, actually the code signing, the notarization bullshit, uh, still not totally solved with us because, so they now require with Catalina, I probably need to solve this next week. This means most likely, I said this before, they force us to new, to use new Xcode versions that we would not be able to use due to using older SDKs. Using newer SDKs means we need to remove support for SCSI and actually, okay, SCSI nobody used, but this effectively is FireWire because FireWire scanners are usually SCSI over FireWire and FireWire scanners for our exit scan still some people have. And this means that people cannot upgrade to a new version and unless we hack something together to anyway use this somehow. But yeah, totally inconvenient. I don't want to change any SDK or Xcode use and Apple forces us for just for this notarization bullshit just to give you some understanding that even if it if we can sell it, it it's inconvenient and it's even us forcing us to do some plant obsolescence although we don't want but that is probably for previous videos down there and um, yeah so there are some emulators certainly which is amazing stuff and um, emulators um, so yeah this is enterprise um, and uh, they, Apple increased their this restrictions, especially after they found Facebook and Google were both misusing the program. Distributed VPN apps require consumer in violation of Apple's developer rules. Um, what is it here? Apps installed this way. So App Store uses Apple IDs to resign apps so that they can be installed onto your device and actually install apps. Apple App Store sends apps over Wi-Fi to a desktop app all server which uses iTunes Wi-Fi thing to install them back on your device. So yeah, not amazing, but yeah, that is what you get from vendor login. So again, this is official APIs apparently, and they can only, only if they change, but how should they change it? Only restricts this even more for leg leg legitimate, legitimate 
Um, yeah, working also in our English here, probably. Um, enterprise users and developers. So not too bad, pretty amazing stuff. Um, I would totally support it, although yes, slightly inconvenient. But again, this Wi-Fi thing can be totally transparent and then you didn't even notice it unless you travel and then if you travel longer than seven days, you need to have something probably for Wi-Fi sync, I guess. But yeah, that's what you get if you are in this Apple ecosystem. Um, no long, but that would mean serious changes to the app development process since they are basically using the self-signing search. Uh, also, by the way, fun fact, maybe actually Apple is doing this app notarization bullshit, right? That we constantly called out here. That is only coming now mostly with Catalina, the naming scheme that we don't like. And because what someone told me, I've not checked this, but you hear it, maybe you hear it here first. I'm, I think it's not widely known if it's true. Again, I've not fact-checked fact, fact checked this, but someone from a Fortune 500 or so company told me, so I hope it's true. Um, he told me that they do not use an Apple certificate because normally if you, at least on the Mac, normally if you develop on the Mac, you code sign with the Apple certificate. So they have their root certificate and over the iTunes developer site and Xcode, you sign the application with um, with a developer certificate, a third party, like it, ours, as, ours assigned our apps with third party developer exact code, GmbH, and this certificate we get from Apple in part of this developer program. And this person from some big AAA company told me, by the way, do you know that you can sign it with any other like very sign or something code certificate? I said, no, really? I said, yeah, we do that. So yeah, not sure if you mix something or if it's true, maybe it maybe don't. I, but it makes sense because it could certainly work if the, if the code signing mechanism in macOS is only checking the certificate against any of the valid ones that Apple would accept in there for Safari and web browsing and code signing stuff. So it makes sense that if VeriSign, uh, VeriSign signs this or you have the certificate from VeriSign for code signing, also there for Windows, that apparently maybe it really works. Again, I've not tried this. If you know more, um, let me know. But this certainly becomes no mood because until now, like until Catalina, you could maybe, according to this developer who told me that, get away with that without an Apple certificate. But of course, no, this is notarization bullshit. As I explained in the previous notarization bullshit emails, you know, each version we need to send to Apple servers for this signing and malware scanning, but yeah, malware scanning my ass. Um, legit instead of legitimate, yeah. Probably, um, totally legit. Anyway, in similar according Apple News, um, apparently Ap Apple also published updates for uh, yeah, German, but whatever, for some security vulnerabilities. So it looks like in iOS 13, there were so important security vulnerabilities fixed that Apple also for those systems that do not got an iOS 13 or so update or 13.1. So those those devices that cannot run iOS 13, they provided an iOS 12 4.2 update. So much to reviewing and malware scanning, like maybe seriously get your act together and develop a bug-free operating system. You know, they have all the security vulnerabilities and they put the burden of notarization and reviewing of our amazing perfect, perfectly fine applications, but they at their side in Cupertino, they can't even get their basic operating system stuff bug free, right? Because not microkernel, um, not in type safe and, and memory safe languages because the old fashioned C kind of or Swift or whatever. But yeah, so much to the double standard, right? They can ship totally insecure stuff, constantly patch it, and we need to notarize it. That, and again, they detect their nothing, right? They will notarize basically nearly everything. Even if I'm hiding there some clever malware, you can be 99% sure they will sign it and distribute it and only later maybe eventually realize, oops, they signed some malware. I can already predict now, of course it will happen, right? So yeah, this means old devices like iPhone 5S, 6, oh, 6, 6 Plus, like actually 
mine apparently does it not get oh, anyway didn't even realize that apparently mm. so yeah that probably means like my my precious headphone iphone xs is now obsolete didn't even realize it so much i'm not in the apple reality distortion field anymore ipad mini 2 ipad mini 3 ipod touch 6g watch os um, for series 1 and 2 um, which also means yeah fun fact on this channel did not even realize but ios latest version so apple stopped support basically obsoleting plant obsolescence of ios 5s 6 6 plus ipad air ipad mini 2 ipad mini 3 ipod ipad touch 6 6g watch and uh, watch which what series one wait a second uh whatever watch os for the yeah watch series one and two so obsolete no updates anymore if you wondered and in my opinion this is even also apple is longer than some android vendors in my opinion it is too short right and also it is locked bootloader so here recurring shout out here we need unlocked bootloaders to now flash their linux on there because otherwise this devices soon very soon don't get any updates anymore so yeah just if you were wondering um welcome there glaucus apple is like do as we say uh, not as we do here yeah, um exactly and why in my opinion i started to shout this out here because otherwise people are here still like hey that is amazing and now available in red and go and buy it and uh, whatever in similar amazing news for closed operating systems there is a new outbreak of emotet or however you want to pronounce it in a medical university in hanover and uh, just by the way after even at the high of ct and stuff fame here the publishing house they had themselves even emotet or whatever pronunciation yeah, whatever and apparently 170 computers uh, infected and exactly why do probably don't want to use windows even if you update this and eventually sooner or later you get some ransomware some emotet some whatever and something um, since monday they fight this there and um, they confirmed this there apparently on thursday and 170 pcs in quarantine and uh, apparently experts say they have this under control with 170 pcs in quarantine and um, since Wednesday they don't have new infections so I mean we, we talk about already about this like patients like like we have this patients and we don't have new infections it's like yeah maybe just stop using Windows install desktop Linux of 2019 high core Dragonfly um, all the other less peak bug systems and yeah recurring shout out here why do I do this channel we cannot continue developing software like this not in C not with buffer not with this buffer over runs under runs um, silent memory corruptions monolithic kernels with one address space and um, yeah they even write here themselves in my in may they had their own at the heise publishing house there and they documented this and even they you see even like it experts at heise even there you click on some attachments in outlook and then you have that infection and and wrecking havoc in your institute or um, nuclear enrichment facility or wherever you happen to yeah um yeah don't worry the pc patient there is stable comments there and renux i think with renux you mean um will be amazing i think you think about our microkernel stuff um working title is not renux it is um it is kernel for the kernel because we have the domain already and um, some of the stream is getting long 46 minutes we are mostly through here in final news uh, face uh, the future is, uh, is 2019 the future is now facial recognition society technology in china beaten by a nose job so oh, by the way nose job is also something probably um, need to consider young woman appearance altered so drastically system can no longer identify her despite the inconvenience she is happy with her new look i mean at least she is happy amazing stuff but yeah 
this is um, also social score. Well, also maybe this if you so a pro tip. If you not, if you have a low social score uh, for all the messages you send, like in, in WeChat, like hey, our government is not amazing. Bing, bing, bing. Social score already minus ten there in China, and you want to escape your social score. Maybe just get a nose job. Maybe that works. Change your name to uh, something. Bill Gates, nose job, something, and uh, voila, you have a new identity. But in more serious news, it's of course. Yeah, machine learning, automation, and in the future, although not that I'm personally too much in such kind of stuff, but what kind of people trapped in this reality distortion field with eye devices, with face recognition, and yeah, apparently she couldn't get into hotels anymore. So there you see how much future there is in China, and then sexy cyborgs on Twitter argue with me like um, I'm not, um, I'm not poor enough, I'm not what was the exact word there on this amazing Twitter stuff where I was eventually blocked. Yeah, I, I can't talk about this because I am from a too rich country and not poor enough to argue with how many roofs they need in ghost towns. But yeah, apparently so much future in China that even we don't have in, in Germany. We don't have hotels where we check in with just face ID and a pay and whatever. So yeah, so much to how the future is in China. and they probably can stop blaming us for not being developed enough there. Um, she was banned from online payment gateways, unable to sign into work. Yeah, sign into work, like seriously, um, was identified only by the pseudonym something, told her television station that her troubles had begun after she had cosmetic surgery on her nose, um, was too much for widely used facial recognition and um, yeah, 20, also, yeah, 21 year, you need already some surgery there. <clears throat> anyway, just when you were wondered how society is developing and what kind of challenges um, people have. And um, someone likes Renox there in the audience, still need to uh, chat with you though. Uh, China the only richest countries, um, one of the richest countries on the planet, just that there are not massive social divide between um, massive social divide between rich and poor. Yeah, I argued this also. I wrote this themselves, and then the, those people who bent me, they blocked me on Twitter. Where I argued, hey, look, in your China, maybe you also have a huge gap between rich and poor. And I even quoted there that 270 or so billionaires. Fun fact: We can fun fact just Also, I'm not making this up. Previous video blocked by sexies. Also, the double moral. They they blame their the own um, bully, bullying and, and behavior, social stuff, and they themselves block totally innocent tweets of just calling out for not polluting the planet and social divide. Billionaire China, uh, something also without typo, but whatever. Um, China rich list, maybe Chinese by net worth. Um, Oops, China count many something. Um, the total billionaires wealth in the US fell by around 5%. It still exceeds that of next eight wealthiest countries combined. Billionaires of China, Germany, Russia, UK, Switzerland. Yeah, just when you were wondering there of those make uh, America great again stuff, maybe ask your own billionaires for their tax cuts. Um, I think I found somewhere 270 or something. Um, where would it be? Then anyway, you get the idea somewhere around 270, I think. So yeah, certainly enough billionaires to also theoretically spread the world more with the 21 richest. I think I somewhere found hundreds. Maybe we should ask Google how many billionaires in China. Maybe Google can answer that, but apparently not. Also, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if, uh, actually maybe this is here something, 53. The United States, which follows China, produced 53 billionaires in 2017, said the report. Globally, there are 2,158 billionaires, which is somehow, in my opinion, slightly crazy. And why I, we are getting from being poor 
open source developers with zero open source income to three dollar a day youtube and certainly all the amazing patreons thank you for that you guys rock totally amazing we have totally amazing stuff coming up not only medical keywords to solder and probably fpgas with pico risk 5 coming our way so we will do some fpga synthesis and also maybe some sgi love just some new email exchange today so tons of fun stuff coming here um, when we are not streaming breaking news um, globally the 2158 billionaires worth are combined 8.9 trillion so thanks for sharing certainly and also why probably it is better not only to support local friends and family businesses also buy from small and independent companies and not this um, richest of the richest that take your ports and headphone jack and working keyboard away from you that solder in the ssd that you need to buy a new one next year um, and so on and so on anyway i guess that's it for today um, i hope you learned something um, how many people do we even have watching actually i have forgotten to make one fun little stream uh, theoretically we can continue with a couple of more things i even fun fact i have done today for free work on exact image tiny little bit i have also some debian patch the amazing people of non non unsuccessful one man distribution debian sent a patch my way last week already i still need to review patch we can do this together live on youtube but actually i have also one more thing to call out but that's probably something for an independent live stream thank you so far um, maybe we go online a little bit later um, certainly uh, sometime soon so yeah thanks for watching hope you learned something and see you soon for all the next tinkering hackering open source and other yeah irix actually we might if so someone is interested in some iris hacking um, so i don't have yet what they would want me to hack on if i might get this now so need to check with detard maybe if i'm lucky as i said i don't even have that one but the irix community reached out and maybe we also do some that would not be open source well my my part would be open source what writing drivers for irix maybe so say stay tuned for all this fun stuff and all the other tinkering and, and stuff to come